Happy, happy Friday. Hope you're all doing so good on this Friday, February 18th, <laughs> week after Valentine's Day. And um, I have my, I have somebody and I'm going to bring her on to see if we can do a joint live. Yay! Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> Hi, Bex. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So it's the week after Valentine's Day. So this is actually a really great, perfect discussion because we're going to have a, a fun talk about relationships. Um, for those of you who don't know Bex, she, uh, uh, you know, she is a love and relationship coach. Um, we met through our mutual business coach, Dallas Travers. So shout out to Dallas. Hello. <laughs> um, well, tell, tell everyone a little bit more about you. Like, who do you serve and what do you, yeah, what specifically are you doing in this? Um, yeah. <laughs> Sure. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks so much for, for inviting me, Katie. And I'm excited to host you next week. Um, it's uh, always fun to do these Instagram lives. Yeah. Um, I have a cat at my feet that's like staring me down. It's really quite funny. He's out of frame, <laughs> but it's giving me like the hungry death stare. Um, but yeah, so I am a love and relationship coach for independent women. I help independent women attract and grow equal healthy partnership lasting love without sacrificing who they are or what they want out of life. Because for so many women, you know, that there's this idea, there's this belief that we can have um, the, the life that we want or with it, like freedom and, you know, just the autonomy or we can be in partnership. And, you know, there's um, there is a gray area. I like to call it the pink area between the red and the white. Mm -hmm. Um you know, of, of finding that, that happy balance and the women that I serve that are, are most benefited from the work that I do are the women that just have not been able to find that balance mm -hmm. and um, haven't been able to find the men that, that meet them on their level, that haven't been able to find that happy balance between intimacy and autonomy. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a, it's a, you know, love is a journey. I like to say that there's love isn't a destination. Love is a practice and it's a learnable skill set. And so that's one of the things that I specialize in is helping independent women learn the relational skills and put them into practice in their own love life. Mm, I love that so much. Um, I do believe that like when I was single, I think I did have that belief that it could, it was one or the other, like you could, oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> have a relationship and lose a lot of your own independence and freedom or be on your own and, and just have that. And now that I'm, I've been married for almost 10 years, it's like, no, we can't have it all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We just need the right skills. Yeah. How did you get started doing this? Like, what was the, what's, what was your inspiration and yeah, your why for doing this? Yeah. Well, I think the catalyst was definitely my own love life and my own like <laughs> miserable failures. <laughs> You know, every every failure is a stepping stone. And uh, over the course of 10 years, um, I had three significant relationships that all ended the very same way, uh, where I gave away so much of myself that after a while, I felt like there was no no alternative for me but to run, to get the F out of that relationship and go get my freedom back, go find myself again. And, you know, after the third time of having that same experience with three very different men, you know, I had the, the big realization, well, I'm, I'm the common denominator. And that really set me on a journey of self-exploration and discovery around the relational skills that are required to balance, you know, this, this, I like to think of an infinity symbol between intimacy and autonomy. And I have been happily partnered with my man now for 10 years. We've been married for seven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, and it, it continues to be a growth edge of mine, even though with all the study and all of the training and all of the coaching that I, that I do, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, again, I just, I keep coming back to this idea that love is a practice. There's no perfection. There's no getting it right. In fact, the more we get wrong, <laughs> the better off we are because that gives us opportunities to learn and, and connect more deeply with our partners. You know, it's, it's like 
there's this misconception, and I know we're going to talk about arguments and conflict, but there's this misconception that the right partner, the right partnership is free from conflict, and it's all cake and rainbows 100% of the time. And that's, that's just not true. So, um, but my, yeah, so my journey um, in, in coaching started about, I guess, seven years ago, when I had... <laughs> I, I, my, my former life, I was a movement professional. I was a nightclub performer, Pilates instructor, <laughs> nightclub performer by night and Pilates instructor by day. And I fell in love and moved across the country, leaving my whole clientele and my whole following back East. And, you know, I didn't really think that through very well, but, you know, I found myself out West and, um, you know, dipping my toe into starting up something similar and realizing that I wanted to have a greater impact. I wanted to have something that was scalable, that could reach more people, impact more lives, um, you know, that was location independent. Mm -hmm. And I was working with a business coach and, you know, it, it, it just kind of, all the pieces kind of came together for me at that time. It was about 20, 2014, 2015, when I realized, like, I feel pulled i feel i feel moved to be an ambassador of love and to be a student and teacher of love and that's that's how i i started bexpert and coaching mm. love coaching for independent women mm. hello elise <laughs> you. um it, it's so interesting what you were just talking about in terms of like you know most people think about love um as like once you're in a happy relationship, like nothing's gonna go wrong, and you know, oh, yeah. have a fight ever. And and yet every single couple I know have fights about everything. Um, and in fact, I was just I was a little bit late doing this live because I was just finishing up a, a call with a couple, and it was around you know fights. And and the thing I, I want to bring up around this is not to like talk about them and their their fights. However, it's just to say, like, they're a really amazing couple. They're really amazing and so inspirational. And like, I look up to them in terms of their relationship. And yet, they, you know, they, they're definitely they have moments where where it's yeah. not very comfortable and not, you know, and there are you know, and there are these fights, right, that happen. And when, you know, and and I like asked you to, to join me on this slide because, you know, as a money coach, I've seen it over and over again because money is the number one thing that most couples even fight about. However, I also know that it's not usually about the money, right? It's it's about so many other things that kind of trigger us and and um, you know trigger us from things that perhaps it was even in childhood or some unconscious thing that we don't even know about. Um, so what? Let's talk about that. What do you think like is the central theme of like why we why we fight, right? As couples. Yeah, well, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think money is one of the top things that, that couples fight about, um, coupled with sex, money, sex, and, and time, how we spend our time. So, you know, our, our, our resources. Um, but I think that, you know, whether it be those three things, or if you're loading the dishwasher right or not, or whether you left the garage door open overnight, or, you know, whatever it is that you're, that you're fighting about on the surface, you know, I think what lies underneath all of that are needs that are not met. Mm -hmm. And those needs are oftentimes un, uh, unconscious to the person who is ha like having a need that is being unmet. And that's some of the work that I do is helping women really understand their own emotional experience mm -hmm. and why those emotions are triggered, whether it's a need that's met, we feel great, we feel fulfilled, we feel seen, heard, or whether those needs are unmet. So we feel unheard, we feel disconnected, we feel lonely, we feel frustrated, angry, whatever it is. Um, and so when we have a need that's unmet and we're not aware of what that need is, it usually looks like an argument kind of up here on the surface versus a conversation down here from the heart about like how I'm feeling and what I need from you in this moment. And, you know, there's just a lot of couples that don't have those skills. So their conflicts can be really heated and about just like 
I mean, dare I say it, nonsense. <laughs> Not that money is nonsense, but, you know, and I think that in, in terms of some of those, those bigger categories, money, sex, and time, um, you know, the, the, there are other contributing factors, as you mentioned, not just needs unmet, but also like our, our lifestyle, our belief system. And, you know, and like you said, childhood, our, our childhood really plays into that, how we were raised, what beliefs were installed in our system as children. Like how did, how did our money, uh, excuse me, how did our parents, um, earn and handle money? Were they, were they vocal about money? You know, what was modeled for us as children? Right. And not only our childhood relationships, but also the relationships that we've had as adults. You know, we could have had partnerships in our 20s, 30s, 40s that also shape the way that we relate with money. And the way that we relate with money may not align with how our partner relates with money. Like I, I remember um, years ago, one of those three <laughs> disastrous related disastrous breakups I had. Um, you know, I was dating a guy and I had been so diligent about being debt free. I had like just paid off my student loans and you know, it, it took this man maybe three or four months to confess to me that he was in thousands of dollars in debt, credit card debt. And you know, that looking back on that experience, I probably didn't handle it super well because, you know, I didn't have the skills that I have today, but at the same time, like, I think it, it, it just goes to say that, you know, it's really important for two people who are in the dating phase, you know, once there's a, a comfort level and a, a mutual attraction to have these important conversations about like, what's your relationship with money? You know, are you a spender? Are you a saver? Are you, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you have all of those questions for couples to, to go through, but these, con these conversations are so vital because they, I'm, I'm not going to say that they're going to prevent conflict and fights about money down the road, but knowing, and it's not even to say that you have to have the same mindset about money, but there is some power in having mutual understanding around what your beliefs are, what your relationship is with money so that I can understand that like, this might be a behavior, this might be a pattern that may affect our collective money down the road. And those, you know, and again, there's no right or wrong about it. It's just this, there's, there's knowledge, excuse me, there's power in knowledge is what I meant to say. 100%. Yeah. Before I met my husband, I was with somebody that actually committed what I call financial infidelity. And it was yeah. like, like, yeah, hiding, not being very upfront with, you know, financial stuff. And it, it, that was the root, like the end of the relationship because it felt the same way as if he, once I found out about how much money <laughs> was like being um, where, where I felt kind of taken advantage of, I think that I started to feel like um, it was the same thing as if he had come home and said, I, I cheated on you, you know, like I, Absolutely. yeah. One of the things that I, kind of come up over and over again, not just with clients, but also in my own relationship is like communication, right? Like communication is so challenging sometimes. It can be. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have it like at least, I mean, I, I'm sure you have a, an arsenal of tools, but is there one communication tool that you can sort of help me and help everyone else that's going to be watching this with that um, to help us to like not fight about something, right? Not fight as much. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's an interesting question because I, you know, the way that I see it is that our goal isn't necessarily, our goal in partnership isn't necessarily to not fight as much, but to have more constructive conversations because conflict is going to happen. We're two individuals trying to do this radical thing, a partnership. I mean, and if you're an independent woman or if you've got like a type A man, like there's going to be some sparks. <laughs> so just accepting that and knowing that that is going to be part of the journey really helps, you know, and then a a allowing that friction to happen, but then also just skilling up in your communication skills is going to help you have, um, deeper understanding is going to help you have more constructive conversations 
about these things. And listen, I am one of the first to say that like, I like conflict is not one of my favorite things. I'm conflict averse. I'm an avoidant attachment style. Like my nervous system will like shut me down quicker than, you know, like I get the deer in the headlights and my husband is leans in and he talks and doubles down and explains and, and explains more. And so that dynamic is very common, whether you're, you know, the genders could be switched. Um, it's so common. And I think the biggest thing for couples to really understand is that when we're in that space, I call it the, the downward spiral, downward spiral or the toilet spiral, um, is to just recognize that your nervous system is activated mm. and there's no good that's going to come out of a conversation when our nervous systems are activated. Mm. So the tool that I have to propose is literally a timeout, a mm. flag on the field. And, you know, when you notice either yourself is yeah, like, you know, know yourself, know whether you um, go into hyper arousal, like my husband, where you're doubling down and talking more and more, or whether you fall into hypo arousal, which is where I go, which is the shutting down, the glazing over the, you know, just that you can't really hear anything anymore. Neither person is really hearing anything, but know yourself, know your pattern, and then begin that process of of self-awareness and really witnessing what happens in conflict, you know, because when we have the power to recognize like, Oh, I'm, I'm shutting down or, Oh, I'm doubling down. I'm like sinking my claws in. Then we can have the wherewithal to say, Hey, listen, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm getting activated here. I don't feel like this is a productive conversation. I'd like to take 20 minutes to myself. I'm going to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, so giving a time frame, assuring your partner that you're going to come back. I, this is really important conversation to me mm -hmm. and I want to give it my best. I know that I'm not my best right now. So I need a timeout mm -hmm. and you remove yourself from the situation. You know, there has to be some mutuality in that agreement that we're taking some time out, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and all of this, I'm, I'm the first one to say that this is not easy shit, right? This right. is. This is challenging. And what I found in my, in my own life and relationship is that having a mindfulness practice, just a, a 10 minute daily meditation to witness myself in stillness, it like really trains the muscle of self-awareness so that we, when we are in heated moments, when we can more quickly recognize that, oh shit, my nervous system is activated. I'm no good for anything right now. Time out. And, you know, that's a practice. It's a, it's a practice just like any other practice where you're, you're developing a muscle. So if you're in that practice, I encourage you to be gentle with yourself and stay committed to it because when you, you know, get into the flow, when it becomes embodied, it's a total game changer. Mm, I love that. Yes, that is so good. Um, you mentioned something about how, when, how we are supposed to be asking for what we need, right, in a conversation. And I feel like as women, we're, I don't, I don't know if we're not trained to do it, but I feel like, yeah, I wasn't, you know, like, I, to be a good girl as a, as a little kid, you're always oh, yeah. not to be asking for what you need, <laughs> Absolutely. you know, instead to just like kind of sit there and be quiet and, and do what you're told, right? So yeah. how do we as women now, like, be able to ask for what we need in a way that can be received and heard? Yeah. Oh, that's such a good question. And you're absolutely right. I mean, this, this shit's not taught in schools. And if you are uh, an adult of a certain midlife age, then chances are your parents didn't have these skills. So it wasn't taught to you or modeled. So there's a lot of self-compassion that goes and goes along with these, these practices. You know, I, I hear women say like, well, you know, I, I can't believe I don't know how to do that. And it's like, just cut yourself a break, you know, like celebrate the fact that the, these, these skills and these things are coming into your awareness now and you have the abil ability to learn them and put them into practice. Um, so I think one of the first things is recognizing that having needs is vital to the human experience. You know, I'm, I'm also someone who was raised to be a good girl and, um, you know, I, I was raised in a, in the subconscious environment that my needs didn't matter and that it was not safe for me to express needs because I would get spanked or, you know, punished or something. Um, so, you know, those kinds of things, those patterns are really hard to break. 
And I find that in adult relationships, women who had histories like we have, we get into, I, I like to call it the magic butt pucker zone. <laughs> when we feel like, because the thing is, is that like, there's a part of us that is really clear on what we need in, in any given moment. That still small voice deep inside, you know, she may be really quiet. She may, you know, eventually build up and build up. And so she's yelling at you, but there's a part of us inside that really is aware of what we need. Mm -hmm. And the distance between that inner knowing and then communicating it, I like to call the butt pucker zone because it's so challenging to get over yourself and to get over that fear because there's a, you know, part of your brain that's been trained that I'm going to get spanked. I'm going to get punished. I'm going to get rejected. I'm going to get laughed at. I'm going to, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so ideally you're in a loving partnership where you can play with these things. Mm -hmm. And I love to, um, I love to use a disarming statement um, that <laughs> it just, it, and it, it just puts the discomfort right out there. Uh, and I, I actually used this a couple of weeks ago with my husband. Hey babe, I have something to share with you that's really hard for me to say. So I'm just gonna say it. I need to take this upcoming trip by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm taking a two week trip in a couple of weeks and I need some space. And you know, and I know that my partner's love language is quality time. I know that, um, you know, there are some things in the ways that I can show up that, that can make him feel rejected. And so I'm very sensitive to that, to the point of, you know, uh, denying my own needs. Mm -hmm. And that's such a tricky, slippery slope because we have to be able to have needs. We have to be able to communicate them. And whatever our partner's fallout emotion is, is really theirs to handle. You know, yeah. he's going to be disappointed. He gets to be disappointed. Right. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that you need, like, um, you know, financially speaking, I know that when I was first starting out on my coaching journey, I, I didn't have the income to support the business coach that I wanted to hire to support the, the coaching training that I wanted to enroll in. And so I had to, Oh God, talk about butt pucker zone. I had to vulnerably ask my husband for financial support. You know, this was early in our relationship where, you know, being a strong independent woman, that was just like, mortifying and death mm -hmm. um but at the same time like being able to ask him that and being able to express to him how important this was to me and and share with him the vision that i saw of leading armies of women to to lasting love through mindfulness and and you know behavioral curiosity sharing that vision with him uh you know and and sharing that need with him brought us closer together of course i you know i got i got his help and um you know, and it wasn't long before I didn't need his help any longer because he was able to see me and see how important that was to me. And, you know, out of, of love and respect and mutual honoring, like that was, that was a no brainer. That was totally cool. So mm -hmm. I think that, um, I think to answer your question is, uh, the first thing would be to make sure that you're spending enough quiet time with yourself because when we're so distracted by input, 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 there's no way that we're going to be able to hear that still small voice that's like knocking at our insides about what we need. You mm. know, you need space, you need, you need to, you, you want to learn, you want to do this learning, you want to do this growth, you want to do this thing or whatever, you know, um, you need this time. Without that quiet time, we just, we're not connected with our needs. So I think that that's, you know, the foundational step. And then the next step is practicing communicating, practicing, like what, expressing how you feel, what you need, um, you know, and there, there are definitely frameworks to, to support you in that. Mm, yes. I love this. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, we're, we've been talking for about 20 minutes now, so I want to wrap this up so that, you know, we can, um, put some of this into practice, but how do, how does somebody work with you if they want to kind of dive, dive deeper into this and then um, understand it for themselves and to be able to help themselves even find a relationship where they can be that independent woman and be able to ask for their needs? Yeah, absolutely. I work with women both privately uh, in um, multi-month multi engagements, committed relationships, if you will. 
Um, and then I also offer VIP days. So if, you know, if there's a woman who feels really skilled up in her dating practice, but really wants to skill up in her communication, a VIP day would be really appropriate for that. And women can find me at bexburtoncoaching.com. It's B-E-X, like T-Rex, mm -hmm. uh, Burton like the snowboard and coaching. And on that page, I have a freebie that are the six essential skills independent women need to attract and grow lasting love. And that's a free download. There's actually a free mini training that happens right after that. So any woman who wants to go deeper into this work can find me there. Oh my gosh. I'm actually gonna go and download that. Even though I'm <laughs> in a loving relationship, but I, I, I think like it's still good to brush up on <laughs> that and knowing yeah. that, you know, to, to be able to, because sometimes I also feel like as independent women, like once we get into relationships and we can fall into some of the old traditions of, of like, okay, he'll take care of stuff or he'll take care of me. And then, and then when he doesn't, you're like, what the heck is happening? <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. <laughs> so, well, thank you so, so much, Bex, for joining me today and for having this conversation around, um, <laughs> love relationships and um fighting in a more healthy way right <laughs> yeah. yeah well thank you so much it's been a pleasure and uh i really appreciate the opportunity thanks yeah. katie bye